today's topic is how do we do transformation in practice? And there's two, two things I want to raise that I hope w could be part of the conversation today. And, and one is the, the role of innovation, and the other one is the role of, of agency. So I will go through these, uh, just talk a little bit about these two, two issues. So first, innovation. There's a lot of talk about innovation now, uh, and there's a lot of hope that innovation will save us. And uh, uh, people, um, there are lots of funding for both technological and uh, social innovation um, to, um, with the hope that they will lead to the transformation that, that we need. But I think it's important with a bit of a, a historical reflection there uh, uh, when it comes to um, how we solve the problems uh, throughout history and what that has led to. Because as, as um, my friend uh, Sander van der Leer at ASU say, it's, it's, uh, it's actually the, our great innovative capacity that has put us in this precarious situation that we're in. And I think that's IGBP hockey stick graphs showing the great acceleration that Carl talked about yesterday is, is an example of that or, or shows that. And that, that um, uh, a lot of the, the a lot of these, these exponential growth, the explosion in economic activity, um, uh, doubling of, of human population, uh, and that we're more connected than we've ever been, is due to, to uh, our innovative capacity. But it's also created all the problems that we, we talk about here, the environmental problem, the social problems, etc. And it's, it has put us in this what some people refer to then as the Anthropocene. So I think it's important to have that aspect when you talk about innovation, that it's not just about innovation. Um, and especially important when we push new ideas to deal with stuff like climate change. So when we're pushing biofuels, for example, as a, as a way to deal with climate change, it shows when you go from a, an idea that seems pretty good on the paper, you know, on the, at small scales, when you scale that up, it has all kinds of problems, like ecological problems and social problems. And, the, and as you see on the, on, the, on the slide there, it's about, you know, biodiversity loss and, and land grabbing, etc. So, so we need ways to think about this. It's not about just about innovation, but it's about framing that innovation channeling that, that, uh, that great uh, innovative capacity in some ways. And I think this, uh, the Oxfam Donut, which is um, a work by, um, a lot of work by Kate Roworth uh, at Oxfam, that has, that has uh, taken the concept of, of, um, of planetary boundaries that Carl talked about yesterday and then, and then put some some uh, social foundation to that. So with the point that, yes, we need to solve, we need to stay within the boundaries, we need to, do, we need to initiate transformative processes, stay within the boundaries, but we have to pay attention to social uh, issues, of course. You can't just um, um, uh, 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 not do it in a democratic way. You can't have uh, you know, dictatorships to, uh, to do it. So there's some, some social issues that you have to pay attention to, of course. So, um, but this also shows that, uh, getting back to biofuel example, that uh, when you push an idea uh, like biofuels, you also have to consider that the planetary boundaries, like biodiversity and climate change and etc., it's, it's linked, right? The boundaries are interlinked. So when you, when you try to solve one problem like climate change and try to deal with that boundary, you might, you might uh, set other boundaries off like, like biodiversity and, and, uh, and land use change. So you need th we need ways of th to think about this. We need ways to, to uh, these frameworks that will help us navigate those, that upscaling of, of innovations that we think we need. So this is an, another, another picture, also by Kate Raworth, and uh, also um, with, the, with, the, with the input of uh, Melissa Leach and others, uh, which is going to be part of the World Social Science Report that um, Heidi Hackman is also part of, uh, and maybe some others of you here. And this picture shows that, that uh, there are, of course, different pathways within, within this uh, 
safe operating space, safe and just space. That's what they call this, this, uh, this space that we, that we need to navigate. And if we, if we don't pay attention to, to uh, human rights, for example, we might derail the process and, and, uh, and uh, go across certain boundaries. And, and, and the same way, if you don't pay attention to biodiversity loss, you might go over others. So it's all about navigating uh, the Anthropocene, maybe, if you want. So, so here, I think the, it's really important what, what Carl talked about. The, the human in nature perspective is really important here. Uh, and that we, that we really look at uh, humans as part of nature and look at human environmental interaction and maybe social ecological systems, if you want. But this, this is crucial because today it is divided up. And you see that in this picture uh, here. It's a, it's a Swedish grocery store. And it's, it's, this is honey. And one is, is fair trade and the other one is, is organic. So, and this is, was posted by one of our friends, Kai Törek, one morning on Facebook. It's like, oh my god, what, what am I going to do this morning? Is I going <laughs> to say the, 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 pay attention to social issues or ecological issues? So it's really about... So it's really about um, social ecological innovations. It's about innovation that benefit both people and the planet. And I think this, um, Paul Hawken talked yesterday about, um, about that we have, we're very good at imagining the end, but we're not so good at imagining the, the transformation. I think, and as part of that, I think it's, important to have a vision that humans can actually be a, a positive force on the planet. And that's where we have to reach. So try to get away from just have innovation that reduces our impact, but really take this full step to say like we can become a positive force on the planet, to have houses that produce energy or fish farms that cleans water, etc. Right, so agency then. Um, Agency, I want to talk a little bit about agency. And someone yesterday uh, talked about agents of change like this. Transformers. That we, uh, and, uh, and that we need transformers. We need agents of change. And they, they, usually they don't look like that. This, this is, this is more, they more likely look like this. This is Virginia uh, Chadwick, who unfortunately died a couple of years ago. But she was very important in... In, the, in a transformational change uh, for managing the Great Barrier Reef. So she was at the, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, uh, a case that we have looked at and that Carl mentioned yesterday. But it's not so much either. When we look at these cases, it's not so much, agency is not so much about these heroes uh, as it is about networks of, of change makers. So we have to get away from just looking at these, these uh, environmental heroes or, or um, um, just key individuals, when we look at transformational leadership, for example, it's usually networks that, that of interacting change makers. And so what we're doing a lot, and this is uh, also um, Francis Wesley's uh, expertise, is how to understand how these networks move new ideas from the fringe to the mainstream. How, uh, how do they... Uh, what strategies do they use to get around barriers, to create momentum for change, uh, etc.? And this is this is um, part of our work that we're doing. And uh, this is this is one case study that it, um, we looked at in the in uh, called the Coral Triangle. Coral Triangle is a, uh, it's a huge coral area in uh, Southeast Asia, Western Pacific. There's six countries gone together to try to in an attempt to create a new governance regime that, that supports integrated management of, these, uh, of, the, of the seascapes in the region. So we look at what, how these uh, change networks then uh, uh, maneuver or, or work in these situations you, where you have all kinds of levels from, from national to, to international uh, level, and especially the yellow arrows. And what, what do they actually do? So it's, a, it's research that looks at um, the strategies they use, but also the faces, the different faces of these, of these changes. So how do, they, 
how did they move from one phase, how did they take it from one phase, because you can stay in one phase, you can be stuck in one phase for a long time, and this is, comes back to what Franz Berkout talked about, that transformation is actually both incremental and, and radical. So, but sometimes you, you work in one phase for 10 years maybe, but suddenly you have an opportunity to, to move. And so we want to understand this process and how they work across scales. It's, uh, so it's, so it, yesterday we talked a lot about what and, and, uh, and how, maybe, of transformations. I think this is about who and why. And also, it's about when. When is really important when it comes to, uh, to transformation. And this is also uh, what Francis uh, Wesley is, is uh, dealing with a lot, like creating the right links at the right time around the right issues. So uh, I want to finish with, with just uh, uh, this picture, because it is about these swarms sometimes that, that uh, just understand how how sometimes just the right constellation of people come together uh, and do something that has huge effects on, on institutions or whatever. So it's about understanding this, this kind of swarming, maybe not for mating, but for, for exchanging ideas. Uh, but so, and I feel like this is something that is, uh, when it comes to network analysis, it's something that these pulses is something that I feel is missed in a lot of the uh, network analysis and in how that work and how these, these, uh, these cr uh, ten very ephemeral networks uh, are created and then disappear as people move to do other things. So I'm going to stop there just to, as a, um, to, um, to let Francis Wesley from uh, Social Innovation Generation in University of Waterloo to pick up the ball.